look down and see my dog and in my human frailty I can't match their love for me Good morning, and welcome again to the worship experience of the Community Church of Poway, United Church of Christ. This is the third Sunday of Advent, the Gaudet Sunday, the Sunday of joy. And I hope that everything that happens in this time today brings you joy, and maybe you leave with a little extra joy to share with God's world. We want you to know that whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, that you are welcome in this place to be part of us to share with us this journey of life, and right now to share with us this journey of Advent towards Christmas. I am so excited to have be flanked here by my dear friends Carl and Myra. And after we have a word of prayer, we're going to sing an old hymn of the faith, an old Advent hymn, maybe a different tune than what you're, what you're used to for this song. But it really does express the joy that I think we all have of the expectation of the coming of Jesus. Let's pray. Oh God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for the joy that we do feel, even in the midst of death and sickness and being separated and staying at home more than we would like. We ask that everything that is said and sung and done today bring us closer to you so that we can be the embodiment of the joy that you need from us to save your world. Thank you for your presence in this time with us. We pray this. In your name, amen. Hello, thank you for joining us. I'm Karen Dunn with the Board of Worship, and I'm honored to be serving today with the lighting of our Advent candles. We are celebrating week three of lighting the Advent candles. This week, our focus is on joy, the promise of victory over death. We light this third candle to remember that in Jesus Christ, 
the power of life was stronger than the power of death. The Gospel of John begins by telling us, in him was life, and that life was light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Isaiah said, surely this is our God. We trusted in him, and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. Our prayer today is to thank you, God, for the confidence you give us in your victory over death. We celebrate with joy that even as we lose those we love, we will see them again. With joyful tears, we recognize your power and your promises. May we continue to walk close to you and keep that joy in our hearts and minds. Let us worship you, hear your words, and do your will by trusting you in every circumstance. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy Sunday, friends. Miss Christy here, sending you your Sunday hugs and hoping that they'll last all week long. I am so excited that you're here for the children's time. Well, today is the third Sunday in Advent, and today we light the candle of joy. We're getting closer, friends. The light is beginning to get brighter. What does joy mean to you? Well, I'm happy to say that this week, I can use my newly rescued dog to talk about the candle of joy. Remember last week with the peace candle? <laughs> she's still working on that. And she's working hard on being peaceful. But yes, she brings me joy, the joy that makes me laugh. And she is a silly dog, and she loves to run and play. And we play hide and seek, and she's so funny when she finds me. She's also very brave until you bring the vacuum out. You should see her tippy-toe around it when it's just standing there in the living room. It is the funniest, joyous sight to see, though. So funny, but with her around, she does bring me joy. So with all the crazy challenges and the crazy times going on, she's helping me find joy every day. Now, not to worry. If you don't have a silly dog to bring you joy, you will find joy in our scriptures today. Today in our Bible, found in Luke 1, 39 through 56, is the story of Mary and Elizabeth and the joy they shared. Now, this is the joy that comes only from God. This is a special kind of joy. You see, Elizabeth, who was Mary's cousin, who was also going to have a baby, Mary was so joyful that she went to see Elizabeth to share the good news. When she arrived and called out to Elizabeth, Elizabeth's baby jumped for joy inside of her tummy. Elizabeth said to Mary, Mary, you are very blessed. You are having God's son. And Mary sang with all her heart, I praise God, I praise God. How do you praise God? So remember this week that the good news of Jesus has the power to bring us great joy. Although those presents under the tree bring us a certain kind of joy, the joy the Christ child brings is the joy that comes from deep down inside our hearts, the joy of having Jesus in our lives. So go this week and share that jump up and down kind of joy 
with everyone you meet. And remember, I love you and have a great week. Bye-bye. Good morning, everyone. I hope you are having a glorious day today. Today's scripture reading is from Luke 1, verses 39 through 56. I know when you hear it, you're going to go, I've heard, that for, I've heard that scripture before. It is a very well-known scripture during, that is read during this time of year. And it is just one that is dear to our hearts. It's titled, Mary Visits Elizabeth. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit for, of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what has spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in the Lord, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, he has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped the serv his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. May today's reading bless your day. Joy to the world
Thank you so much, Wing in a Prayer, for that reminder to us that our joy can be the subject of song and that our joy can be unspeakable as well. I love the contrast in that new part of the song. And I wonder this morning, have you ever had those times when your joy was so complete, so consuming, that you really were without words? <laughs> you just had joy. Well, this is our third Sunday of Advent. It's Gaudet Sunday, the Advent Sunday of joy, and we lit the pink candle in honor of that. And the theme for our Advent this year has been the canine connection. We have been looking at things based on our scripture, but also based on what we can learn from our dogs. The commands we give them, their responses, either in bark or action. And I think of that bumper sticker that I read the other day, and I thought, I have to have that. And it said something like, God, please make me the person that my dog thinks I am. <laughs> Let's pray. Holy Presence, we thank you for this Sunday of joy. We thank you that in trying times, in times of disease, in times of death, in times of staying home more than we would like, that we can find joy. I ask today that you bless the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts, that they may be pleasing to you. And may we leave here today a people who are not only joyful, but a people who share that joy with a world that is hurting. Pray this in your name. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning, as with most of our Advent readings, is a familiar tale. A young mother-to-be, Mary, takes off for the hill country of Judea to be with Elizabeth. Now, Mary and Elizabeth were relatives of sorts. Most scholars believe that they were, well, they were cousins linked together by the ancestry of their fathers. And because of this, and because of intermarrying between different tribes, there's a possibility that they could have been first cousins. And there's also the possibility that they could have been fourth cousins. But it really doesn't matter. The point here is that Mary went to someone that she was related to, someone with which she had a familial relationship, someone that she trusted. And it solidifies for us. It solidifies for us the relationship between Jesus and John the Baptist, who was to be Elizabeth's son. Thus, the relationship between Jesus and God. Jesus and us. Jesus and John. One beautiful family. I know it can be a bit confusing when you look at things, but just remember they were related. When we look at the Hebrew Bible, what we call the Old Testament, we read writers who are recalling stories that have been told over and over and over throughout centuries. And most of these writings, especially the work of the prophets, is basically trying to build up the idea of David as king. He is the most revered king for our Jewish siblings. He is the most revered king throughout the entire Hebrew Bible. And that's the reason that we revere David, why Jewish, our Jewish siblings revere David, by sometimes wearing a star of David around their neck. And you see, Jesus was a descendant of David. Okay, are you with me? Stick with me. So Jesus was a descendant of David, and his connection with David means that he was in a lineage of greatness. These kind of prophetic writings are all over our Old, our Old Testament. So whatever the relationship that Mary and Elizabeth had, it is important to always read about this relationship thinking of the connectivity of the coming Messiah. The coming Messiah, which we know is Jesus. Listen again to verses 39 through 45. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And what, why has, has this happened to me, that the mother of the Lord has come to me? 
For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believes that there would be fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. Elizabeth's child leaped for joy. Must have been quite a leap. <laughs> quite a leap for Elizabeth to have attributed this moment this movement in her very being, to an unspeakable joy. The baby in her womb was, of course, as we have said, John the Baptist. Now, what is a little humorous here is that Mary and Elizabeth do not hold back their joy at all. In fact, they were anything but unspeakable, right? These verses comprise what we know as the Magnificat, the Song of Mary. The lyrics of joy are written all over them. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the loveliness of his servant. And surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is God's name. And in a way, these words, I think, can seem a bit strange when we consider the ramification of Mary's pregnancy, right? But her joy, man, her joy was not only complete, I believe it was supernatural. I think it was, it was uncontrolled because of the weight that she put in the words of the angel Gabriel. Now, as most of you know, Freddie and I have three miniature dachshunds, Grace, Berkeley, and Lola. They range in ages from about five years to about 13 years. They, well, they're our family. And when you have dogs, or any pets for that matter, for any length of time, like 13 years, I think you would agree with me that you start to think that you understand them. You can identify their characteristics. You know what makes them happy. You know what makes them sad. You know what makes them put their tail between their legs and scoot away so they don't have to face you for having done something wrong. And last week, you know, we talked a little bit about my Shotzi. And Shotzi, in his last blind days, he would crawl in bed. And after he had created his circle of comfort, I would say, Shotzi, lay your head down. And he did. And I can tell you this morning that every dog that I have ever had displayed unspeakable joy. They display unspeakable joy when they hear these words. Are you hungry? <laughs> I say unspeakable because, well, they don't start barking unless I don't, you know, deliver on my question. Instead, they run to that familiar place where they know they will be fed. In our home, it's the laundry room. We call it the puppy's room. I make my way to where the food is. I start to scoop it out, and they are bouncing up and down, and they are running in circles, still not barking. They know what's coming, and they know who feeds them. And in a very interesting way, I believe it is this moment every morning and night where my dogs remember that they are dogs. You see, I put their food down in front of them, and the drill is they have to sit. Not only do they have to sit, but they have to look me right in the eye. When they do that, I give them a, a kiss sound, and then they can dive in. That's when their joy finally is realized. They hear these words, are you hungry? And no matter where they are in the house, they can be completely at the other end of our big, long house. They hear those words to a very familiar place where they know their joy will be complete. Well, I am not trying this morning to say that Elizabeth's baby was, well, like a dog. <laughs> but I do sense the same kind of joy, a reactionary joy. Elizabeth's baby heard Mary's greeting and went to town. My fur babies hear those words, are you hungry? And they too leap for joy. So why do you think that I think it's important that we look at this message and hear this message on this third Sunday of Advent? Well, the answer is this. 
the kind of joy that we have in this beautiful, well-known passage is unexpected. And the kind of joy that we read about in this passage is expected. Confused? Those who, these parents who find that they have a moving child in their womb, it is a time of great joy. The words, are you hungry for my pups? That's a twice daily occurrence. But in both of these circumstances, that joy is like the very first time, right? The joy is all consuming. And I think the joy is all consuming because of what the joy is attributed to. Are you with me? The dogs hear the word, know that dinner's on the way. The baby leaps and Elizabeth automatically attributes it to God and holiness. It echoes for me what we talked about last Advent a year ago, in that the Advent season is a time where we celebrate the already and the not yet. The idea that we live in the reality of Jesus as the Christ and still celebrate, filled with joy, the reality of his coming again. The joy we experienced, the joy we do experience, even in this time, is based on the what, and I would say is based on the who we attribute that joy. But not everyone has this kind of joy, do they? With all the joy that we talk about as followers and seekers of Jesus, we have to remain open to the reality, to the truth, that not everyone experiences this kind of joy. We live in a world, in a country, that is being ravaged by a deadly pandemic. Some 300,000 lives have been lost in our country alone. Hard to find joy there, right? We live in a country where the unemployment rate is skyrocketing off the charts. Did you know that um, rates for white Americans' unemployment is 6.6%? The rate of our Hispanic siblings, 13.8%. And the rate for black America, the unemployment rate for black America is 15.2%. Doesn't sound very equitable, does it? Dear ones, this is why one of the reasons that I love the United Church of Christ, because we see these systemic problems and we decry them and we seek to level the field, as it were. I mean, it reminds me of the prophet's message from Isaiah, comfort ye my people, says our God. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill made low. You see, it's about bringing about equity. We can say all day long that all people are created equal, but that doesn't mean that there is equity in our communities. With that in mind, I look at Mary's words. God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. These are prophetic words. Prophetic words from a very young, female, unknowing prophet. When we look at prophecy, so much of the time we think about someone who says what is going to happen, right? Father Juan Alfaro, who is a Benedictine monk who lives in Austin, Texas, he writes that prophecy is an affirmation of expectation. Okay? I am affirming that I expect something to happen, right? However, you can also read this affirmation of expectation and surmise that the expectation is on you and me to make sure that that prophecy is realized. 
when we are part of bringing true joy to the world, equitable joy, loving, all-inclusive joy. When we do that, then I think we begin to understand yet again the reason that we do these four weeks before Christmas, preparing for the day, looking at the importance of our call and our charge. The charge given to us is to bring joy wherever we go. The charge is to not only have the joy, but to be able to attribute that joy in kind. And we are not to rest until the joy of Christ is complete. Not just for you and I, not just for our church community, not just for the city of Poway, but God's entire creation. So I want to encourage you this week not to only try to be joyful, not to choose joy as we talked about several months ago, but I want you to look and clarify for yourself where that joy comes from, where it originates. It might be the joy of buying that special gift for that very special someone, but we know that it is not the buying that brings us joy. It is the giving, the reaction on that person's face. It might be as simple as the, of the joy that, that you have when you throw your loose change into the red kettle at the mall. Well, the joy for me sometimes is just getting rid of loose change because who wants it? But the real joy is being a part of something bigger than myself. Maybe the joy that you find in these weeks is in decorating, making your house ready for the joy. But the joy doesn't come by getting up into the attic or going into the crawl space to pull out those dusty boxes of things that have been well stored for over a year. The joy, the joy comes from that reminder that we prepare our hearts, we prepare our homes with beauty in celebration of the birth of this one we call Jesus. When I feed my dogs every day, twice a day, it's all repeated. <laughs> the joy, it's like it's the first time. I hope that this Christmas, this Advent season, that you can take it as the first time. Realize the joy that you have. Go to that familiar place. Huh? Mary went to her cousin Elizabeth. My dogs go to the puppy's room. Where do you go? What do you do? How do you react and respond to that unspeakable joy that you feel? When you find it, repeat it. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. Like the first time. Let's pray. Holy God, we thank you for this passage of uh, unimagined, unspeakable joy. We thank you for these words that we hold dear to our heart. We thank you for the message that now is traveling from this small town into the hill country, the joy that is spread. May we be part of that joy in this community. God, help us to remember that there are many who do not know the joy that we have. Maybe there are some of us in our church faith community who don't have that joy. I ask right now, in all honesty, God, just make that known to me so that we can impart, that we can give, that we can provide joy for each other. 
We're getting close. We're getting so close. One more Sunday of Advent before Christmas Eve. Help us not to waste every opportunity that is presented to us to be the people of hope, to be your people of peace, to be your people of joy, to be your people of an all-encompassing, all-enveloping love. We thank you that you give us an opportunity as we come together every week to pray the prayer that you taught your very best friends. A prayer of hope, a prayer of peace, a prayer of joy, a prayer of love. Hear us now as your people as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us in worship today. I pray that something in this short time together resonated with you. And maybe you are feeling a little strengthened, maybe a little joyful, I hope, <laughs> and go out and be joy to God's world. I want to always give you an opportunity to be a part of the ministry here. You will see the banner at the bottom of the screen if you would like to go and click on that link. You can give electronically to the church, or also you can mail in a check but I want you to know that this call is for our members and friends. If you are visiting with us, your gift to us is that you were here today. And I pray that you are strengthened and you were blessed and you will come back and be with us again. Beloved, remember that God has no hands but our hands, no feet but our feet, and no face but our face. And I would add this morning on this Gaudet Sunday that God has no joy to share with the world except through each one of us. So share the joy. Realize that not everyone in the world is experiencing joy right now, but share that joy with this world. Let us be the church that God dreams of. Let us be a people who are waiting with joy. Amen. While we are waiting, God, while we are Jesus, our Lord, Emmanuel, while we are waiting, come, come, save your queen. See you next week.